We'll be dodging more raindrops, especially in eastern and southeastern Killaloam through the rest of your day. Even a couple of thunderstorms not out of the question. 50s for a majority of the area, but 60 or better once you hit Sioux Falls and then go uh, south and east of the city. Lows tonight, mainly in the 40s. A couple of 30s not out of the question toward the Wyoming border. Mainly dry, but that's not going to last. Uh, the seasonable temperatures don't last either. We'll talk about all of that coming up, but until then, midday in Killowin starts right now. Live from Killowland Media Group, midday in Killowland. A Sioux Falls man involved in a police standoff will be facing charges. Plus, a hostage freed by Hamas is speaking out about her harrowing ordeal. I'm Michael George at the United Nations with the effort to free others and to get humanitarian aid to Palestinian civilians. who shot himself in the foot during a standoff is out of the hospital and in the Minnehaha County Jail. Jaden Davis will appear in court today on several charges, including kidnapping, assaulting law enforcement and child abuse. Last week, the police department's violent crimes unit caught up with Davis in a parking lot and blocked his car in so it couldn't leave. Police say he rammed the patrol cars, grabbed a gun and put a baby on his lap. SWAT and negotiators were brought in. Davis eventually surrendered. He's scheduled to appear in court this afternoon. This isn't the first time we've reported on Davis. A little over a month ago, the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office posted his picture on social media. In that case, he was wanted for allegedly strangling a woman, refusing to let her leave, and taking away her phone. It's one of several cases filed against the 19-year-old this year. Other cases allegedly involve drugs and stolen cars. In weather, it's a pleasant midday. We're expecting dropping temperatures in the coming days, though, aren't we, Adam? Yeah, we've been delaying the inevitable when it comes to getting those uh, colder temperatures in place. So get ready for that. Uh, much of the region is doing pretty well, but... In the southeast, it's been a different story. We've already seen a couple of showers and thunderstorms this morning. And as we take a look at our Beersford radar, you can see a couple more of those showers moving through uh, from southwest to northeast, and including one thunderstorm uh, just to the east of Pipestone that's going to be uh, headed toward Tracy and then going south of Marshall as well. Uh, beyond that, again, much of the area is mainly quiet. We'll head on up to Aberdeen now and take a look up in Brown County. 44 uh, with a north wind at 11 miles per hour. And then as we go back downtown, we are still seeing uh, the occasional raindrop come along. But beyond that, it is noticeably milder. 58 degrees with a north wind at 7 miles per hour. Do not get used to temperatures even in the 50s sticking around for much longer. Uh, by the time we hit the end of the week, as we've been hinting at for a little while, that is going to change and in a pretty big way. We are in the 60s in Iowa, Spencer more specifically a 62, 55 for Yankton, 55 also in Brookings, but 46 for Huron, 47 at the Capitol, 46 Rapid City and a foggy 46 at that, 45 for Spearfish and Buffalo. And unless you're in Spencer where you are a single degree warmer compared to this point yesterday, everybody is cooler uh, at this lunch hour compared to what we had on Monday and it's by double digits in many locations. So We'll zoom out a little bit more. This is what we're seeing. And I mentioned much of the area is pretty quiet. The exception is over toward Butte County, north and east of Belfouche. A couple of showers there. Mulbridge may be seeing a couple of little sprinkles here and there. But beyond that, that's just about it. Temperatures today are going to be 60 or better to the south and east of Sioux Falls. 50s from Marshall looping over into Wagner with scattered showers and the occasional thunderstorm possible. 50s and a few upper 40s up to the northeast. Again, a few lingering showers, especially close closer to, say, Canby, uh, Watertown, and Huron. And as you head out west, 50s and firmly in the 50s, partly to mostly cloudy, maybe an isolated shower toward Chamberlain in winter, but I think we're more dry than wet out that way. We'll be talking about... Uh less than ideal conditions, to put it mildly, coming up in your extended forecast in a little bit. Thank you, Adam. Today, a week from Halloween, if you're looking for a sweet way to give back for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, just head over to Oh My Cupcakes in Sioux Falls. Each October, the business sells their pink velvet Ms. Kim cakes and cupcakes. A portion of the proceeds go to the Avera Cancer Institute, but they also want to raise awareness about breast cancer. Every October, we just really like to remind people with our messaging to um, do your monthly self-checks, to get a mammogram, uh, to not ignore something that you think might be a little bit suspicious, but to get it checked out. 
The cupcakes are available in store each day and the three layer cake is available for pre-order through the rest of the month. Coming up later on Kelloland News, Lauren Solak will tell us why giving them back during this month is important to Oh My Cupcakes founder, Melissa Johnson. An off-duty pilot is charged with 83 counts of attempted murder and reckless endangerment. Authorities say Joseph Emerson tried to shut down the engines during a flight from Everett, Washington, San Francisco. Authorities say he was riding in the cockpit jump seat at the time of the incident. The plane was diverted to Portland, Oregon, where Emerson was taken into custody. Former President Donald Trump's fixer turned foe, Michael Cohen, is posed to testify against his old boss as a key witness at the former president's New York civil fraud trial. Trump voluntarily came back to court today for the highly anticipated testimony. Cohen scrapped their expected showdown last week, citing a health issue. Cohen has said it will be his first time seeing Trump in five years. Trump is expected to testify later on in the trial. He denies any wrongdoing. One of the two elderly Israeli hostages released yesterday is describing her ordeal. Hamas is believed to still be holding more than 200 others captive in Gaza, including Americans. In Gaza, conditions continue to deteriorate for millions of Palestinian civilians living in the Hamas-controlled territory, which Israel has bombarded with airstrikes in the wake of brutal terror attacks in Israel earlier this month. Michael George reports from the United Nations, where the U.S. Secretary of State is in meetings to discuss the situation in the Middle East. Sitting in a wheelchair, 85-year-old freed hostage Yoheved Lifshitz described her kidnapping. Her daughter translating from Hebrew. My mom is saying that she was taken on the back of a motorbike and that while she was do being taken, she was hit by uh, sticks. Hamas handed over Lifshitz and 79-year-old Nurit Cooper to the Red Cross last night. Lifshitz says she was treated well, but separated from her husband early on. He's still believed to be held by Hamas, among about 220 remaining hostages. We do not know from my mom's story what happened to my dad. We do know that he was injured. Israel has stepped up airstrikes in Gaza ahead of a widely anticipated ground assault. Israel's military says it hit more than 400 Hamas targets overnight. Gaza, though, is very densely populated, and many of the dead and wounded appear to be civilians, including children. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is attending a U.N. security meeting on the Middle East, as United Nations agencies call for much more humanitarian aid to be allowed into Gaza. U.N. organizations describe the situation in Gaza, home to two million people, as dire. They say more than 20 times the aid currently being delivered is needed to support civilians living inside the Hamas-controlled territory. The trucks have come in so far are just a trickle in the face of the immense needs. U.N. officials say nearly two-thirds of Gaza's health facilities have ceased functioning as fuel runs very low. Michael George, CBS News, the United Nations. Israel has not allowed fuel into Gaza amid concerns that it will end up in the hands of Hamas.